one by one uh, introduce yourself and why you're here. Uh, if you're just here to listen, that's cool. If you're going to run and be a candidate, let us know for what seat. Uh, Kevin, can you start first? Yes, hi, my name is Kevin. Um, I live in Waipio, uh, District 37, um, Precinct um, 1. I think precinct, I'm the precinct president there. Um, I just joined in, I got the email, so I'm just joining in to listen. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, we have Brett. Go ahead, Brett. Good morning, Brett Generelli. Uh, I live out in Hawaii, Kai, uh, former military guy retired from that um just interested in general potentially in getting interest in uh getting involved whether it's uh working a can working a candidate's campaign or maybe far they're off in the future becoming a candidate kind of undecided at this point awesome thank you sir appreciate that and then brian brian smith Brian, you're on mute, I think. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I'm current active duty military, live in Kailua, um, and I'm looking at probably running for office in about six years or so, so I'm here to educate myself on the process and uh, get in touch with what the, uh, the issues are and how to tackle them. Awesome, thank you for that, Brian. And Shannara. Hi, I'm out in the uh, Ella Beach area, and I'm uh, interested also in educating myself and trying to understand the entire political process. I've been kind of not engaged for a long time. So anyway, I'm here to learn. Awesome. Thank you, Shanara. Yeah, you you got a big district over there, so it's awesome. We can help them out. Uh, your district out, a lot of Native Hawaiians. You got like two... Uh, homesteads over there, so that's awesome. Or okie dokie. So I'm not sure what happened to our guests, but I'm not going to make you guys wait. And so we're going to get the ball rolling. So today's uh, training is political, digital marketing, and social media strategy. Uh, the integrated campaigning. Just know that some of this stuff is um. We already went over it last week, but we're deep diving now a little bit more intensely. Okay, we don't have anyone in the audience here. So for those online, if you would like to speak, can you please raise your hand uh, by using the reaction button at the bottom of your screen? And then mute yourself when you're not talking, please. Thank you. Okay, disclaimer, same old, same old. I will be sharing these slides with you folks um, after the training, either tonight or tomorrow night. There's a lot of material that is uh, that goes with this slide, so I need to get those loaded up in the Google Drive. So what you will learn today, uh, information in and out, uh, developing messaging and package it for channels, understanding the power of brand awareness, uh, application of digital marketing principles, and then examples. Um, sorry, hold on. Let me let Sheila in. Okay. Aloha, Sheila. Thank you for coming on. Sorry. I had a no, you're... technical issue. <laughs> you're fine. Okay. So... We just actually was going over what uh, they will learn today. And so I'll allow you to uh, give your spiel. So everyone, this is Sheila Medeiros. And Hello. go ahead, Sheila. Um, okay, so I'm Sheila. Uh, I was the campaign manager for Gary Cordery, who ran for governor in 2022. And um, so I guess... I'm sharing my experience as a campaign manager. Uh, that was my first uh, experience as a campaign manager. And I guess um, 
that was a big uh, feat for me since it was a statewide campaign. I was fortunate enough to have uh, an experienced campaign manager from the mainland. So we had essentially we had two campaign managers, one that was stationed in Colorado and I was the campaign manager here. So I had a lot of help in, in regards to how campaigns run in a statewide uh, 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 race. And um, so I learned a lot. And what is really key to a successful campaign is your team. And you have to have the right person for each role. So I have a background in the military. Uh, I retired 34 years, but so I had a different concept of my leadership style was different. So my mistake was implementing my mil military style of leadership into this statewide campaign race. Um, a lot of it did work, like as far as processes um, and systems and processes that helped a lot. But what did not help, and I learned that quickly, was how I managed people. Uh, in the military, they know how to take orders and they they carry on whatever orders I I, I would give, but and not question it. Well, in this civilian sector, they questioned. <laughs> and so it was it was a good experience for me because I learned, right? I, I, it's always a learning process. So you you really <clears throat> go back to um, learning each person's strengths and weaknesses and then applying them to the position that best fits. Because initially, I, I mean, we started off, I say, with a core of, six women for Gary's team and a lot of them all of us actually had have, have we never campaigned for anyone so uh it was it was trying to figure out what we were best at doing and then placing them and then we, you also need to have flexibility in the process because then you'll you know they may say they have that certain skill set and then you find out that they really don't. And they are actually better at maybe planning events. So just the key for campaign management is being able to know where to place people, know their strengths and weaknesses, um, and being flexible yeah. with, with the people because it's your people that run this campaign. And you don't have a campaign if you don't have volunteers and people who are, you know, working. So that was one of the uh, big takeaways for me. Also, with having two campaign managers, uh, it had plus and minuses with uh, the operation side. The campaign manager on in Colorado, well, he he's providing um, guidance based on what he knows his experience in Colorado. So the cultural nuances, he had no idea. Um, certain things you wouldn't market or say in messaging, um, yeah. you could say in Colorado, but not here. So there was the, we, there was time taken away because we had to, you know, take time with correcting and redefining messaging that was applicable to Hawaii. Um, yeah. But I mean, I it, it worked. Uh, there was there were a lot of pluses because he came with a lot of years of experience campaigning uh, for big, you know, senator races, congressional races, um, and gubernatorial races as well. So I, it, there's plus and minuses with everything. Um, but yeah, that's the biggest takeaway I have is knowing your people, know their strengths and weaknesses, utilizing all of your resources. So it's resources, which resources are your people, but like tools, there's a lot of tools 
that the campaigns have. And it all depends. Some people relied on what HRP provided. But because we, Gary came in in March and, and what I really recommend, and he, looking back, we looked at, you know, what could we have done better? And I think for a statewide race, he needed to start campaigning two, three years out. And in regard, not actual campaigning, sign waving, but planning and and crafting his message. And so that we weren't crafting messages and his platform in the beginning, we would have just been hitting the ground running once it once we launched. So I would recommend like if you're planning on doing a congressional race or a statewide race, that person really needs to decide two years out. Like the I guess the governor's race is um when is the governor's race? He just got elected in 2022. So another two years. So if you yep. want, if there's someone on here that wants to run or know someone who wants to run for governor, that needs to be done now. Like the planning has to be done now. Um yep. that way you have everything, all your system and processes already ironed out. And all, all it is is once you launch, it's refining and you start, you know, you 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 will already have that database of messaging and then you can just start pushing it out and you refine it as you go. Cause you know, things change and the events happen that you have to target certain messaging. But I would recommend that starting earlier. But if you're doing like a state, right? If you're doing like a district, like you're running for house rep or, um, Senate, you don't need to start that early. Yeah. I would say at least a year out, you're thinking about it and you're already like gathering who you want on your team and having those conversations. But um, yeah, I think um, that from the top of my head, I'm sorry, I didn't really prep for the meeting. Um, you're fine. <laughs> uh, so sorry, I have a new grandbaby. So that's really my my focus at this time i'm a new grandma so um yeah if anybody has any questions i can answer questions if you have any anyone has any questions thank you sheila i really appreciate that because you pretty much uh kind of touched on some of the stuff that we're actually going to talk about today so yes does anyone have any questions for sheila before we get started on the training Oh, I see you, Brett. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Under the reactions, it didn't show me the raised hand thing, so I couldn't <laughs> find it. But uh, I just wanted to ask you, you know, you, you talk about the campaign team, and, and we've had a little training on that already. Mm -hmm. um, wh what would be your key three or four members of that team that you, you ultimately, I would say, what, at, at the two, you know, if you're doing a statewide race, you're talking, you know, two to three years in advance. Who are those most key positions? Okay, so of course your campaign manager, um, your fundraising, you need somebody who's really good at that because it costs money to run a big race. So your fundraiser, um, uh, of course you need a really like detail oriented treasurer that keeps account of your books and, and just because the treasurer needs to report to the state spending commission once a month. So that needs to be like accurate. Um, your, your social media, your marketing person, um, your PR person is, is key. So I would say your fundraiser, your treasurer to keep you out of jail <laughs> um, <laughs> and your marketing person, uh, those are the three key um, positions that need to be filled. Um, yeah, and then and then every I mean every like you like I said every position is valuable, but those three are like your bread and butter. You need to have them at your hip daily. It's like I was speaking. We were having meetings like throughout the day just to follow up just to because especially with the marketing and your PR person things if your candidate says something that <laughs> off messaging it's it's damage control right so um yeah 
I would recommend. And then, you know, there's some hidden gems, right? Like you may not know, you may think somebody just does accounting for a living, but their side hustle is like social media influencer. So it's it's understanding who your members are, what they're talented in, and and ap- applying their skill sets. And you definitely want to place them in a position where they really enjoy doing. Because I had a our fundraiser. She she also had talents in cooking, and she was amazing. She could cook for masses of people. Um, yep. But um, yeah, just just. Those those four are the top top four positions. I can agree with that, Sheila. Definitely campaign manager, treasurer, your communication and social media person, and your fundraiser mm-hmm. person. Definitely mm-hmm. four top. Um, yep. Okay, I see Melba raising her hand. Melba? Aloha, Terry. Aloha, Sheila. Hi. I'm not quite sure if you remember me, Terry. I introduced myself back to you when Gary was running. I think he was at the convention, at the convention center. Um, I'm interested in running for the congressional race, um, challenging Maisie Hirono. And um, I am not quite sure if you do remember me. But anyway, my question was... um, I remember you, Melba. Yeah. We met, I I think you offered to be my campaign manager at that time. (laughs) (laughs) If I recall, yeah. Yeah. But... Um, anyway, my question is, um, you, you know, first of all, my apology for coming into the meeting um, a little bit um, late, but I caught the tail end of your, um, you talking about, you know, a campaign a candidate, a potential candidate would probably would have to plan ahead, like maybe like years in advance, you know, whether it be two to five years. I've been thinking about this in my mind for about the past five, six years. And then I started talking about it for the past two two and a half years, close to three with, you know, with friends and acquaintances and anyone that I would meet. Um, and um, does that include that, that planning stage? I mean, you're thinking about it. So um, I'm assuming you're thinking about all the things the incumbent is not doing, right? And you, exactly. You have to not only identify the problem, you have to provide a solution to those problems. So mm-hmm. Um, like when Gary, we would brainstorm is like, okay, what's your solution? I, I wouldn't let him suggest or, or state anything unless he had a solution to it, R- regardless if there's a solution that's out there already, but if he agrees with it, then that's fine. But you want to provide that for the people. Um, yeah, as long as you're doing your research, if, mm-hmm. you know, for the past five years on Maisie and man, I have a whole laundry list of that, but, <laughs> um, I yeah, as long as you're doing that, and then also, I'm pretty sure you're already thinking about who you would want on your team, um, and you and you know your your friends and your family who is you know their weaknesses and strengths, and so so here's the key thing: if you're um, if you have family and friends, right, there has to be this this discussion with them because. Mm-hmm. Po- campaigns can be brutal because it's a lot of, you know it, it you can't allow your feelings right. to to dictate your decisions right. especially with your personnel right like if they some people may not agree with the direction right but they have to we can all come to agree to disagree but we're going to move there's sometimes there's no room to debate um, and that's the call for the campaign manager um, and, and the candidate. You talk about it. You come to a point where, OK, this is where we're going. Not they're going to they, there may be some dissent in the direction of a whatever you're talking about. Um, but that's the call of your campaign. And you have to trust that campaign manager like wholeheartedly that trust has to be there because that campaign Mm -hmm. manager is making decisions for you and your campaign but yeah to you've been thinking about it i i saw you on on the at the convention i think it was Mm -hmm. um but yeah that that's fine um but she what she's up for election right next year yep next year yeah oh yeah you need to hit the ground running girl (laughs) (laughs) you need to hit the ground running like yeah yeah yesterday (laughs) 
but you can do it. You can do it. If you get core people, I mean, and it is what, what people need to understand. It is door to door knocking. You have to hit it, a lot of doors and, and let people know who you are because you're coming in against some of uh, the blue machine, right? She's right. got mega donors. She's got the system behind her. And she doesn't have to go door to door because her name, she has her, her, her name's already, you know, she has a brand name. Um, she's Maisie. Uh, so yeah. you, you have a challenge, but hey, David and Goliath, right? So, right. you know, if you have that spirit and you in inside in your core, believe you can, you can challenge her and, and defeat her, then I more power to you. Great. That's giving us goose, goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> I get you, Sheila. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you for those, that, those, those pointers. Yes. I appreciate but no, it. But you need to start like yesterday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, to be honest, I've been doing it every weekend, you know, talking nice. to people at the beach. Yeah. Just, just having conversations one-on-one um, and um, just being very creative. Um, I've been attending any training that is available to me that is offered and, um, you know, in between life in itself. But, Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I've got that David and Goliath, you know, uh, attitude and, you know, if there is a will, there is a way, you know, and, um, and I'll let go ahead. Sorry. No, I just said that, but that's my faith. God, God is my everything. My number one. So exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got Brian who has a question also for you, okay. Sheila. All right. Hi, Brian. Hi, Sheila. Um, thank you very much for your time uh, and for your insight. It's all super helpful. Um, the question is on how you actually assembled your team. Um, just because I know people that uh, can handle social media doesn't mean that they're the best out there. Or just because somebody volunteers to run my campaign doesn't mean that that's the best choice for me. How did um, you and Gary kind of go through and assemble that team to make sure that you got the best and most fully qualified people on the team? Okay, so remember, I don't know if you, you heard that part. So when I joined the campaign, he had a core team uh, already, and that was just his friends. So Gary, he I, I'm not sure if anybody uh, knows, but he is the president of Aloha Freedom Coalition. So he had a huge group that he could pull from. And a lot of them came over from the Aloha Freedom Coalition with their skill sets. Now, because I had no, no participation in the Aloha Freedom Coalition and I was coming in cold, I did not have any idea who they were, what they could do. Um, so I said in my previous comments, flexibility is key. Because you're going to identify, say, for instance, you gather, you, you collect your first core group members, and you're going to, based on what they're saying, because you don't know a lot about them, they may say they're a social media influencer, they can do social media, you place them in that position, and they totally suck, Right. You you have to have that discussion earlier on that, hey, you may have this position now, but, you know, and, and you have to carve it out in a way that it's not insulting, but just let them know that it's fluid. And if this position doesn't fit you, then we, we can, you know, uh, put you in another position that you would have better um, success at. Um, yeah. But we had to change out our social media person once. And then the second person was just on top of everything. Um, and then also for the statewide race, we had a media team in, in Colorado as well, as well as in Hawaii. The, a statewide and congressional race is big. Um, so we uh, hired outside help to, and I was the ground operations campaign manager here. Um, but yeah, so I would say, you know, we, I had a team already assembled, but I had to figure out where they fit based on what they told me. And then just by observation and how they performed. And then I made switches. I had, I made changes uh, when I needed to. Awesome. Yeah, I got, um, I uh, copied everything that you said the the first go around. I just I wasn't sure about like the uh, 
uh, at the, the entry level, if you guys went through like an application process for your initial go around of team members or anything to that effect, but flexibility, got it. Thank you. Thanks, Sheila. Appreciate that. Um, okay, I don't see any more hands up. Again, thanks, Sheila, for your time, and um, I going to start the training. If you All guys right. don't. Well, mind. good luck. I hope. Uh, and I hope some of you are running for office. We need a lot. We need to balance out our legislative branch. So. I hope yeah. you all are running or campaign chair. Good luck to everyone. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Okay, let's get the ball rolling. And so, yep, there's a lot to learn today. Information in, information that you're going to gather, bring in, and pull in. Voters data files social media, information out, branding, that's very important. What you're sending out, the content, canvassing, door knocking, talking to the people, messaging, what are you putting out there? Voters database. So the best resource, I read from multiple sources that I've been reading books, and gathering information is the electoral register. That register has information such as address, phone numbers. You know, you need the address so you can go physically knocking on people's door, canvassing, phone numbers. The tricky part about the phone numbers is often um, even the Office of Election gives bogus numbers. So, you know, we got to get out there, knock on doors, and verify people's information based on the uh, GOP data centers information, so district chairs and their precinct presidents and vice presidents, um, they're able to get that information from the district chair and precinct president to go out and uh, door knocking and update uh, people's information in the GOP data center. And then supplement with subscriptions um, on your website. Segment and target cross channels. So segmenting target specific messages to individuals, their voters history, how they've been voting, uh, income, number of dependents, how many uh, people in their household, uh, age, age is also like a really important one because you need to know uh, what age group you're targeting uh, in that baby boomers, Gen, Gen X, Gen Z, um, and employment. There's a rule of thumb for database segmentation. You know, focus five to 10 hours, more better. The more you focus on that, the time, uh, you can just get things, uh, your voters database more solid, more targeted. Uh, develop at least 10 different segments. Uh, I've been reading 10 is kind of the magic number. And then segmentation categories such as the demographics, you know, your district, if you're running for House District Senate, what uh, uh, area does that cover? How many districts? Uh, geography, hot button issues. What's going on in that district, in that uh, congressional area? You know, like for my side, District 45, gun violence, not just gun violence. Now it's become violence, period, like stabbing. So stabbing and guns is a thing in my uh, district. And then registration vote status. So in the GOP data center, there's a, a status where the voter is registered, but they haven't voted in the last X amount of elections. Um, those people is the are the ones that we need to go talk to. Like, hey, you know, you haven't voted because it tells you when they last voted. Get, develop messaging and package it for channels. So specific themes like fairness, jobs, change. What do you want to see? What kind of change you want in your district, um, in your area, if it's Senate? What are the problems that is uh, you're facing in that area? Uh, political messaging, things that are used to put a clear um, proposition for voters. 
develop everything through storytelling. So I always learned this when I was in network marketing. Facts tell, stories sell. Storytelling is the way that humans communicate. Fastest way to deliver message um, to a human brain is telling a story. You know why? Because people remember stories. Uh, it just sticks and stays. Uh, everything you're putting at their heart. Having community outreach. So getting out there uh, in your district. So I know certain districts, they're actually going out there talking to the people, uh, door knocking, just saying, hey, you know, um, we have district meetings, not just inviting them to district meetings, but also just getting to know like, hey, what's the problems that you folks are facing in this district? You know, what's your concerns? Um, and always listening to your community and what they're saying, because that would be your um, like a message for you to target in what the issue is. And you can research um, issues and problems and then find solutions. It's all about solutions. Setting up to capture specific information. So you got to set up your campaign team um, to be able to move from one channel to another in that like from social media to canvassing. That's why you got to have teams like you'll have a canvassing team, someone who, you know, a team that likes to go out, talk to people. And then another one that, you know, on social media, they can uh, boost you by doing comments and um, liking. That also is important. Uh, know what you're trying to achieve. It's always important. What's the goal? You This got to be written down. It's not something that it just pops off your head. You need to be goal driven and know what information you're trying to put out there to convey, to elicit. Understand the power of brand awareness. Be consistent. Campaign brand should be developed in reference to, to you, the candidate, or your campaign, the history and overall campaign theme. Uh, be unique in the colors, logo, the music you use. Um, like, I, I know there's certain, like, even boxers, they have certain uh, songs that play when they're coming out. It's like, pick the right song, slogans, colors. That's important. And then your brand must be clear and repeated often. Because repetition is everything in that people remember seven times. Seven is the magic number. And then create a style sheet to maintain consistency. Political messaging is content. So, you know, blogs, taglines, slogans, uh, campaign images, videos too. So if you're a candidate and you're out there in the community or if you're a volunteer in the community and you see a candidate, you know they're running for office, you know, do a and take, take a video of them, you know, doing community cleanup. I know in District 35, we have two candidates that often come out, help us to do community cleanup. And she actually videotapes um, what she's doing and all of us inside of her videos because that's her PA. Application of digital marketing principles. So digital marketing and canvassing team. So that team should be able to touch um, voters across various platforms, IG, Instagram, Facebook. Um, gosh, there's so much. YouTube, making videos, posting it, putting it up on YouTube. Um, and make sure that the language that is used is tight and coherent. And then train the team to make sure that everybody understands they're on the same um, wavelength. They're on the same, you know, just make sure that they're moving forward in a, in a forward trajectory. Uh, integrated campaigning, power of political branding and the political messaging, the message you're sending out. Okay, digital presence. How will you, your organizers and volunteers, use email, social media, SMS to recruit more volunteers? You know, like some people's websites I see, uh, especially in the mainland, they a lot, a lot of people running for office on their websites, they have these click buttons where click to join, click to uh, for more information, click to become a member. Those are important to have those buttons on your 
um, website so that um, you can draw in more information. That's how you grab data. And then tell the story of the campus, amplify your core message, what you're trying to get out there, what's your message. Um, register, register voters and talk to voters about voting. Gary, what is SMS? Social media. What is SMS? I forgot. Okay. Text messaging. Sorry, text messaging. Okay. SMS. All right. Because there's SMS and another one. MMS. So SMS and MMS. Like texting. Okay, and then um, which social media platforms and texting tool will the campaign use? So there's these um, apps. Of course, you got to pay. And so Shannara should know this because we text blast districts and precincts uh, individually, one by one, using our phones because, you know, it's kind of expensive uh, to get these texting tools like the robo texting a robocalls and so we just do them the old-fashioned way one by one i remember texting over 500 people in one district just to get that district organized uh what digital goals you gotta set goals then training your staff make sure that the person who's your comms person um social media person that they train the staff and volunteers to use digital tools. That's super important because right now, you know, the younger generation, oh boy, they know the ins, outs, and upside downs of, of uh, digital tools. And then how will your organizers train the volunteers to use the digital tools? And then website basic content, like your homepage, who's endorsing you, blogs, press kit. Um, a lot of these, in the past presentation, I didn't dive deep, but I gave you the resources to, um, for example, the press kit. I know in one of the resources, I put that into the packet. Um, so please take a look at that. And then, you know, donation page. Oh, donation page. You gotta get that red button, that donation button on your website. That's important because, um, you can draw people in to uh, donate on your website. And then I put in red uh, the political campaign website uh, design that you guys can check out. Social media, there's best practices like everything else. You know, be interactive. You don't want to be boring and just paste, keep putting words. You want pictures, you want videos. Um, make it interactive, make it fun, make people want to uh, come back to your page again and donate and donate again and again. Uh, timing matters. It's all about the timing. Um, know your platform. If you're using Facebook, make sure you know all the different options and tools that you can utilize because like Facebook and um, IG, Instagram, they're free. Utilize that to the extreme because you're, you don't got to pay. Free is good. And then consider using third-party posting platform. I saw a lot of those third parties, you got to pay. And so if I come across any freebies, uh, I'll let you guys know besides the YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. And then there's one, uh, I found this Sprout Social, an all-in-one social media platform. There's Buffer also, also known as Buffer App. Uh, multi-purpose social media software. So that is SMM. I have to learn all these acronyms. And then Hootsuite, complete social media management platform. Those you have to pay. So examples of social media platforms, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, now called X, and then Facebook. So Facebook, that's your grassroots heavy platform. Engage with voters and volunteers. Uh, best way to get your post seen is to gain engagement so that you're keeping, you know, conversation. Someone posts something, you want to make sure that you're uh, responding to that within 24 hours. 
hours is, is you know, ideal. Uh, focus on driving people to take action, uh, such as like if there's bills that, um, you know, so opening session for legislation is January, help me, 17th or 14th? Okay, so it's coming up uh, like the second week in January, but it's like a Monday. I got invited to come. But um, yeah, where are we? Where are we? In yeah, so keep that engagement, um, positive comments. No, what we're having training right now. What are you come, Kalana? Can you take care of that? I'm sorry, guys. And so engage positive comments. So you're gonna have the negative Nancy, Debbie Downers. You don't wanna engage with any if they're negative, keep it positive. And then X, also known as Twitter. Mostly reporters, politicals, and influencers, not voters. Um, according to the research that I've been uh, going, really where, but you know, you never know. Times are changing, so um, cause more on news and commentary. Tweet often, you know. Trump loves to tweet. He's a he's a tweet lover. <laughs> Use a mix of plain text and visuals, and do not engage with the trolls. And then it's. It's like a discussion, use an authentic voice. No, you know, don't use all capitals and lots of question marks or exclamations when you're engaging with people online because that's like you're screaming and yelling at them. And Instagram is more for the younger audience, um, so they say, but I have a lot of people 50 and up, they're actually utilizing Instagram now more than Facebook. Uh, timing is key. Do not over post. You don't want to keep blowing up your uh, feed because some people actually subscribe to you. Um, uh, they they sub not subscribe, but they get notifications every time you post. So if you're posting like four or five, six times a day, that's like craziness. Their phone is dinging off, off and on all day long. And then Instagram stories is the best tool for broadcasting. Oh, and post reels. So I've done reels uh, for this network marketing company that I was in. Um, just like your public announcement. Uh, when I'm cleaning the machine, servicing the machine, um, I actually was running the video and showing people how to clean their Kangen machines. Okay, and then YouTube. Use keywords in your video file name. That is unique to you. So for example, um, you know, you want to, for me, I would have like the title of whatever it is your, uh, like say you did a community cleanup at mm, Waimea Bay. So Waimea Bay dash, uh, Savaina Air for Senate or something like that. But use that tagline, uh, that file name often the, the ending part with your name, whatever you're running for. And then um, post captions. I'm not a YouTuber. Uh, I watch once in a while, but I need to get more deep dive into that because if candidates are going to want to use YouTube, I sure better know how to tell them to use it because I do not know uh, except to click and watch the videos. Um, and then it says uh, drive conversations and then embed and share your so on the bottom in red, uh, there's video tips and strategies in the YouTube Creator Playbook. So according to Zapier, an article written by a guy named Harry Guinness, uh, dated this year, November 22, 2023. This is the six best social media management tools in 2024. There's Buffer, Hootsuite, Social Pilot, Loomly, um, Icona Square and send, Sendable. Um, of course, these all you got to pay. And let's see. That ends my presentation. Is there any questions? Do you see hands? Ah, no questions. I guess uh, I gave you guys a lot of info, yeah?
that was a lot. But there's more resources for that. Oh, yeah, I had a question um, regarding text messaging. Um, how much is, um, you know, to pay for one of those services, you guys um, text message the everybody in the um the contact list that you mentioned in the very beginning everybody uh, who is registered as republican um is that what you guys did um and so how much would something like that cost yeah I, do you remember i i do actually so text messaging campaigns uh prices vary depending on the platform that you go to um, one particular plat, most particular, the going rate right now for SMS and MMS messaging is five cents per message um, that you send out. Now these aren't on your phone; they come from uh, they come from whatever platform you are using. So usually they come from a one eight hundred number, or if you have maybe Trump or Vivix uh, are inside of their data roll right now, they're getting like a two two six three number. Um, those particular things are a little different for text messaging and, uh, and media content as you go out. But a really safe bet is five cents for text messaging, 10 cents for MMS uh, are the going rates inside of there. So if you come across a company and there are companies out there that are trying to charge you 20 to 50 cents um, per these per these individual items, it could be a thousand essentially. So five to 10 are the going rates. Does that answer your question? Yeah, very helpful. Um, and can anybody sign up for that service or is there a, um, what is the process or what is the paperwork involved? I'm sure there are restrictions, right? Yeah. He's asking about the GOP. So the GOP data center yeah. is available to us Republicans, uh, district chairs, all the vice chairs uh, and precinct presidents. Uh, that is a program that the not program, but that is a database that is um, upkept and hosted by the RNC. When I stated that we were text blasting people in the districts, I'm a regional vice chair also in the county, and I'm in charge of seven districts. So at one time, it was only my district when I was a district chair that was organized. So when I became the RVC of districts 39 to 45, I had to find a way in how do I get people to come to meetings in districts that are unorganized? And what I did was on my personal cell phone with my own, um, uh, uh, what you call, cell phone company, I just texted people in the district and precincts one by one, and that's just using my own cell phone. I didn't use any um, platform or whatever because I didn't want to pay. I'm too cheap. I, I didn't have a problem. Uh, it took me like five days to do almost uh, 500 people in one district, and then another time was like 400-something in two days um, because I had numerous people in my district helping me to text other districts to get people to come to meetings to organize those districts. So just know what I talked about earlier, that that's free. I use my own cell phone and the list came from the GOP data center, which we call the GDC from the RNC. So are you, you're a, dish, you're a precinct president, right? Right, correct. So your district chair in your district um, should be, pooling your list for you because even though I'm no longer a district chair, I help those in the regions and I pull lists for their district chairs and their precincts. Cause you know, I want to see, uh, I want to see uh, us all succeed. So I don't mind helping those districts. If you okay. don't have a district chair, Kevin, um, at the end of this presentation, my next slide, take my number down and then I can help you. Uh, pull your list for your precinct, um, but I'm going to need a confidentiality agreement, a CA form signed, because I can't hand over that information without you signing an agreement. Okay, yeah, we have a district chair, and he does have a, a list of contacts of registered Republicans in our district. Um, we just haven't gotten around to, you know, trying to figure out how to uh, bring people to meetings. Um, like you said, it's been kind of challenging for us. We're trying to brainstorm. So I was thinking about this texting thing, but I just didn't know how to go about it, how much it would cost.
but hearing what you said, you individually texted everybody. Um, <laughs> so like out of a thousand texts, I would imagine like, you know, people would be responding and sometimes your phone would be blowing up. I don't know, but I guess it worked, right? People um, oh, started yeah. attending these meetings oh, because yeah. of your text message because other people don't know, right? Um, we had um, all seven districts wasn't formed. I formed my own when I was district chair and then I helped form four others. So in my region, there's five districts organized and two that is unorganized at this time. So text blasting does work. Um, who's your district chair? Chris Tanaka. Okay, so Chris Tanaka, I've been sending him the list. He has the list. And I've helped him and educated him and some people in his district on how to get people to come to the meeting. You got to call the people. If texting is not working, call them. Because I know District 40, Ramon Ruiz, he was texting and people weren't really being receptive. Um, so he started calling and just kind of talk story with them and then invite them. And now his district is organized. Okay. So I literally been pulling the list for Chris Tanaka. Great. Thank you. That's helpful. You're, you're welcome. No problem. Um, I see Melba. Go ahead, Melba. Sorry, Terry. I'm trying to find my, my mute button. You're fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> question. Um, I don't think that we, um, there's, let me see, two questions, I believe. Um, the first question is probably, um, are there a list of vendors that, um, that you guys work with that would um, be, I guess the list would be given to us where we could um, get like, you know, our posters, um, our photos and, and just those, you know, um, things that we need to, you know, distribute to, to I have um, the voters. List. Okay. I have a list. That would be great. And then the second question is um, everything that you presented today, um, that's available to us, right? What do you mean? Your your slide presentations? I always provide it. Okay. As long as you register for my course, even those who register but told me they can't make it, I still send them the slides every single training and all the resources that, that goes with it. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Oh, right. that was it? Okay. Brian. I just wanted to go back to Kevin's question real quick um, because we did a little bit of research in my, uh, my regular job here for a uh, mass texting system. There's a service called Slick Text. Um, if you guys have ever been to you know, a restaurant or wherever and you say, hey, enter your phone number for updates and you get like, um, you know, hey, $5 off, you know, your next sandwich or whatever, that kind of stuff where you get those uh, those texts from the business, you can do that through oh, Slick yeah, Text, like and they do it. Yep. Yes, and so they do that on a um, uh, by text. Uh, you, you know, you can purchase up to like you know thirty six hundred texts or whatever the case may be, and so people would have to sign up for it though. So if you have a population of people who may be interested in your meetings, you can generate a QR code, and they can they join using that QR code and are batched under that QR code. So you can send out a text to all of them all at once, and they kind of pre-batch themselves if you use that specific QR code. So, um, and, and it goes anything from like you know 100 texts up to uh, I think it's like 10,000 or 50,000 or something like that. It just depends how much you want to pay per much uh, per month. But where they get you is that when somebody hits a QR code and they go to opt in, that counts as one of the texts against you. Um, you can also prevent. You can have a, a back and forth dialogue with them via that service or you can do basically broadcast only to where they cannot reply to you. Uh, so that might be something you might want to use. Milano, can you speak on that about the texting? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for that. You're absolutely correct. Uh, the thing I would caution uh, on all those uh, options is under the political spectrum, whether you're a candidate or a campaign, you have to fall under, you have to abide by the professional and whatever uh, the state rules are for that particular advertiser. So if you're going with the different companies, you need to make sure that they understand that you are a political campaign 
and that they are uh, they are abiding by that because man, nothing's gonna destroy a campaign quicker than you know you didn't know you were using something uh, you know for a text campaign and then you didn't abide by these particular laws and then all of a sudden the scandal becomes well now you're trying to circumvent them what the laws are made so thank you for all that information I, i'm not familiar with that company but as long as they do understand that you are a the campaign that sounds like a great choice awesome thank you any more questions i see kevin's hand up is that uh, old? let me take it off that was my previous oh. question no problem. I take it off. Any more questions do you guys have? So the other trainings, is it, it's the same training, right? All the dates that were listed in the email. No, they're all different trainings. I don't, I don't repeat myself because I record the trainings and I have all the resource slides. I don't uh, repeat. I keep going forward and building on my trainings. Oh, okay. That's good to know. So if you want my past trainings, email me. At the end, I can click next so you can have get my information. Um, and then just email me and request. The reason I do this and have you guys register is for accountability. I don't want later on a, a candidate say or people in the campaign say, oh, she never help us. She never do nothing. If you are not on the registration list, then it's because you never sign up and I'm not going to be held responsible if people don't sign up. So if you sign up and you say, oh, well, I never get training and uh, no, you did get training. So it's all about accountability. I'm doing this for free. I have a full time job. I have a family. I'm also the regional vice chair on the county side and VC of Canada Recruitment and Training. So I'm super, super busy, but I got voted in to do this job and this job I will do and I will do it to the best of my ability. So okay. yeah, anyone wants my previous, just email me. It's not a problem. I just won't give it to any Democrats because here's what happens. <laughs> when you, no, seriously, because anyone can go on the Republican Party's website and come on my training, but you're not going to get my stuff unless I vet you. So after the training, if you, if anyone emails me, I always check if you're a Republican and a Hawaii GOP member. I don't just like hand it out to anybody. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks, Terry. No, no problem. Okay, if no one has any questions, thank you for your time and I appreciate you all. So next training is January Six, I believe, um, because next week we're having a Christmas party here. Please, please, please sign up. Come join us. Our Christmas party. We're going to have Santa. We're going to have, um, what do you call that? Auction. We're going to be selling off like a massage, 90 minute massage, like all kinds of stuff we're going to auction off. So next week, Saturday here, 5 p.m., tickets. You can uh, buy it on the Hawaii Republican Party dot com and seventy five dollars and yeah we can hang out and talk story and party i thank you for your time and bless you all